Yeah, actually, uh, love and it actually means good. <laughs> because uh, the thing is that everyone, when, when someone comes uh, and when, when someone is new at the cosmic community, in, overall they always ask very silly questions that can be only inserted in Google. So <laughs> when, when people started to use Google, we, we kind of evolved as a, as, a, you know, as a race. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So I always say, if you want to you know, be better, just use Google and just use tutorials. And overall, if you just need some help, always you can ask cosplayers. They all will probably, most of them will be very happy to help you. But if you just want to save your time and their time, you can always try to use Google first. If you don't find an answer, then write them. Honestly, I always try to answer in every uh, private messages. So I believe most people do the same. So don't be shy. Try it out. And if they don't answer, their fault. Dennis. <laughs> okay, so I think we can start with some questions because they are the most easy way to uh, guide you through each step of making armors. And I will start, start with Pitapo, as I uh, mentioned before, because I believe it's the, one of the easiest and most friendly materials for every beginner in making armors. So, the question is what is Pitapom and where I can get it? So, Actually, I have to ask this, per this question too, because every community and every country has different shops. In, usually, in, in, uh, in Poland, in, in, uh, internationally, in Europe, you can always get those in DIY shops, in you know, the artistic, crafty shops, you can buy those small, small uh, sheets of A4 or A2 of the, uh, A3, sorry, A3 of the, of the foam. Uh, you can always use eBay, because eBay always has their answers. <laughs> uh, and do you guys have, like, Again. The oh, don't worry. Like, actually, uh, there's some kind of a serum party outside, and some children decided it would be very funny to see my costume apart. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, worry. it just it's, it's possibility. Let's just pretend that those children were, you know, like radioactive something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. then, fallout yeah. children. You know. Fallout children. Yeah. Fallout children. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. All right, so do you guys have any shops like that in Greece that you can, yes? Uh, we have a huge, uh, you know, store uh, that's called Jumbo and has huge uh, EV foam uh, 10 meter sheets. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, can like puzzle parts and uh, we also have our time. It's a shop here in Thessaloniki and uh, there you can buy more, um, not sturdy from but it, it's smooth on both sides so I guess that okay. can help uh, people and both uh, Jumbo and uh, our time have uh, these uh, thinner from the craft form. Alright, so that's it. So this is basically yeah. the place you can go and yeah, grab everything you need. a couple of places, not a lot. That's right, okay, okay. that's very good because some countries don't even have that. Uh, for example, uh, Lithuania, Latvia and the Baltic, Baltic countries, yeah. they don't have Home yeah. at all. They are using a cardboard and they are using a PVC, which is very hard to work with if you're not familiar with you know, using tools and heat guns and stuff. You guys do that. <laughs> okay, so you guys have those places and also you know, the, the art shops I, I mentioned before should have some of those. And the phone basically um, it has different types, different uh, density, different uh, thickness. And the most easy and you know, the most basic form is craft foam, the one you can use you know, in schools, you know, children use it, so it's very easy to get it in every area. Every, every. So it's very, um, very uh, soft. So I wouldn't recommend using this one for you know, full pieces of armor because it's too soft for making base armor. But for some small details, you know, for small decorations, this one is very good. It's two, mi two millimeters thin, uh, thick, so it's not that big. And you think how much heavy I we don't know who the person is, but uh, she clearly enjoys covering herself with my phone. Not much. <laughs> so, guys, yeah, so which glue I can use with this material? And this is actually very tricky because using the right glue can save or kill your costume on the convention. And I hope uh, this, um, this will help you a lot during the next uh, calls. So, Eva Foam is this kind of material that works very well with uh, super glue. You know, the fast, uh, fast glue is actually called Sierra Pretty Glue for the uh, for the technical reasons. And it's, this type of glue actually melts foam together. So I think it's one of the, the, the strongest kinds of uh, bond that you can get from glue. Uh, but with foam and foam. If you want to, for example, connect foam to leather or some kind of uh, fabrics, this won't, this won't do. So let me show you other types of glue. 
For example, this blue is called polymer blue. Do you guys have this? It's kind of a, it's, it's, um, it's like a gel, it's transparent. Do you maybe use that? Oh, I see someone. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, glue is a thing in glue. You mean the wood glue? Sorry? You mean the wood, the wood glue? No, it's not the glue. It's, it's polymer glue. Is it the one that comes in two tubes and you have to mix it? That's a possible, that's a possible. No, it's something different. It's, it's like very, very, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a gel. It doesn't really stink, it's stinkless. <laughs> maybe we don't have that. Oh, what's it? Oh, maybe we don't know the name. Because it's one of the best glues that you, that you can use with fabric, for example, fabric and foam. I'm pretty sure we have it, but I am losing translation when, when it comes to mm, it. I see. Mm. Well, it's called polymer, so maybe that word could ring a bell when you mm. go to the shop and see it. Yeah, so if you want to connect, for example, fabric with foam, this should this, do this, this, this. <laughs> And that's wood glue, actually. Wood glue is the thing that every cosplayer should know and cherish in their lives. Wood glue is this, uh, this glue which is based on water. So if you want to apply it on your, on your armor, which is very important, and I, and I will explain it very good in a few slides later, uh, this glue will work with water so you can dip your, your brush or, or, or sponge in water and apply it with it. So it will be easier to cover your foam with, with water. But don't go overboard because if you put too much water, it will like drip down. So. You have to be gentle with that. And it's very easy to usually buy in every uh, hardware store, so I think you guys know this one. And yeah, it's very cheap. It's very good for priming your armor, it's very good for uh, connecting uh, all, all, also fabric to to foam. There's not that strong connection, I prefer the polymer glue. But still, it can work. And it's very, very easy. It's also not toxic, so if you want to work with your smaller siblings, wood glue is also very good. And how to. The, the holy grail of cosplayers, wood glue, <laughs> it never tells you, I mean, actually, guys, in Greece, does the holy glue melt in the, in the sun? No, I know. Really? Yes, yeah, no. Uh, depends. I would expect it to. We have a problem with the wood glue. Mm -hmm. Sorry? We have a problem with the wood glue. Seriously, what is it? Yeah, if it gets very me melty by the mm -hmm. sun or by heat, mm -hmm. it can uh, uh, regrow as a glue. It can make again the glue, yeah. Also from the rain. Okay, from rain I understand because it's water, but from yes. the sun? Yes. It, no, it, uh, if it touches you. Oh, wow. Water okay, okay. Yeah. I understand. That's hard. Is the world the same problem? Like, if you go for the sunny photo shoot, the world melts with the sun? I, I, I haven't done some sometimes. kind of things like hot glue and normal. Mm -hmm. I would need uh, the same amount see of heat they need to, you know, to melt. Okay. Um, this one is not that hot. Okay, not that bad. Because uh, I know, yeah. you know, uh, some people who make whole costumes and costume parts out of uh, hot glue mm -hmm. are cheaper and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know why, because they well, use that. And uh, they say that they need the, it needs a lot of heat in order to All right, okay. So it's uh, sort of durable because it gets a bit plastic-like mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it doesn't melt. So That's really interesting, good. because in Spain I had a story about a person who left their costume in the car. Uh, for four months, though. No, 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 just just for a, a few hours before she could go to and she get her badge and everything, and she came back and <laughs> it worked ex exponentially in the car, so uh, that's, that's also true. Yeah, yeah it's hotter. It's hotter. Like having it in an oven or something. Okay, so the, the lesson is don't leave your costume in the car <laughs> <laughs> because it can melt and. So, hot glue, every, car, every uh, shop has it, it's very cheap to use it, it's very uh, cheap to get the, the refillments, and yeah, it's very good with foam, it's very good with the plastics, but uh, be, uh, um, be cautious with the uh, material that have smooth surface, because wood glue can go off from the smooth surface, so leather, fake leather, plastics, which are not like, um, you know, like rigid and stuff, this kind, this, this, this thing can go off, so wood glue, wouldn't, uh, sorry, hot glue wouldn't work with the smooth surface. That's very good lesson because I always see people using uh, hot glue with uh, fake leather straps, for example, and it all breaks all the smooth stuff. And fabric glue. Actually, this is my, fa my, this is my favorite one. It's called Putema. It's just a bit dry. And it's very good for connecting fabrics with foam. So this one is the best for the, uh, making strong connection with the fabric and foam. Yeah, so maybe I guess if you have any questions, please ask me. Yeah. How about contact cement? Contact cement. It's also very nice for the, uh, for the foam, but 
I, I didn't uh, apply it here because it's, uh, I believe it's a higher level of, 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 of views that I didn't have this here because it's so great. But yeah, it's very good. It also seems so much. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes. And it destroys the process. Sorry? It destroys the brasses you use. Brasses? Brushes? Uh, uh, brushes? Oh, yeah. Like one you can use the brass at all. I mean, there is one trick, I don't know if you know it, with uh, jar. And, yeah. and you can, can put the uh, inside. So it doesn't like. We apply it with knives. Also, yeah, or, or uh, sticks, like from ice creams or something. I apply it with uh, the Sublaki sticks and the foam scraps. Mm -hmm. It's you know, really clean good. and when you. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So for other guys, um, complex cement that, that 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 kind of glue that you have to put two sides, uh, very thin layer of the glue. You have to wait until it's you know dry. You can put, put your finger on it and then you connect it, and it's strong. Uh, sorry, it holds strong as hell. So it's very nice glue, but it's not very friendly for using it at home. You have to have open window. So if you're leaving your parents, don't do it <laughs> because they won't be very happy. So yeah, let's go further. So do you, how do you get your phone card? This question is so strict in English. <laughs> yeah, I'm very sorry. I didn't hear it. So the wood glue. The wood glue is one of the easiest ways to get your iron armor um, stronger, to get your armor primed, to get your armor very shiny, to basically get your foam into armor-like shape and state so you can paint it and make it look as realistic as possible. So this material is really cheap, you guys. You can get it very cheap, in, probably in Greece as well. And you probably need about two to three to four layers of wood glue, depends how tough you want your armor to be. Um, I prefer usually to three three layers of wood glue. It is, it's, it's working for me. Uh, actually, the whole my armor is covered if, with wood glue. Today it's all like three layers of it and then paint job, so it goes pretty well. It doesn't, it doesn't break that much, actually. It, it's supposed to look bro broken anyway, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing for this question. Yeah, so you have to cover it, and wood glue, besides um, making your foam harder, it also makes it very nice base for paint. Because if you put paint on your on your bare foam, it's going to um, dip in into the foam. It's not going to be as vibrant and, and shiny if you don't put uh, something uh, in between. So wood glue is very nice for uh, taking out the shine. And also you can use latex. Oh, sorry. Sorry, question. Yeah. The wood glue, did you mix it with uh, water or just uh, from the bottom? It depends on the brand of the wood glue. Some wood glues are very um, thick. You, you, you can even put your brush inside. But some wood uh, some glues are quite uh, liquid. Liquid shitty, liquid, 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 or it's, it's just... Uh, <laughs> so, it depends on the brand. So, with water it's just, you know, a matter of testing. You know, sort of exactly, water. exactly. I usually like to uh, put my brush into a cup of water and then just use the, what, the wet brush, it's like not mixing anything. Just wet brush and then try to smudge it as, as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, the same with latex. The latex is actually a material that is used with uh, prosthetics and makeup and it's uh, good for um, using it with um, fake, fake parts of the body, but it's also very nice for priming armor, uh, uh, armors. The thing is that the latex will, um, it won't make your armor not tough, it won't, it won't make your armor very strong and, and durable, it will make your armor quite um, flexible. So it's uh, very good for, for example, LARPing, and many people cover their weapons with, with latex, because it's, it's just very, uh, very soft and harmless, so if you... Okay, sorry, Jesus is calling? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it's something from the... from the... I think <laughs> Yeah, so latex will make your, uh, your armor uh, softer, you might make your weapon softer. If you hit someone with the latex uh, weapon, it's not going to leave any mark or, or, or like, uh, like a br bruise. So it's very useful for the um, for the labs. and also with armors. If you uh, brush your, uh, your armor with latex, also your paint your paint brush will die because latex uh, dries on the brush. So <laughs> and yeah, it's also very it's very very stinky. So if you the same thing, if you use it with, in your home, oh your mom will kill you. I <laughs> sorry, she will kill me. So it, it actually stinks like a pee. So this uh, is uh, as dumb as that. So yeah, it's good, but if I can, uh, remind, if I can uh, record something different, 
uh, in a second. Uh, first, I will uh, tell you about resin. Resin is also one of the most uh, stinky materials, so it's also very hard to work with it in, uh, at the home. So if I have to recommend you something, we will do it. It's the best. Uh, but it is this. Uh, resin is the um, kind of a <laughs> <that you have laughs> to that you have to um, mix together with the hardener and uh, cover it on your uh, on your armor on, on your foam. Uh, resin will make your armor extremely durable. It will make you it will make it very very strong, even even you as, as plastic strong. Uh, but you will need a lot of layers, and you have to be very careful with applying it because it's very liquidy. So it can drip down. And they also say to apply first that like um, good glue. Sorry. They also say to apply first uh, good glue and then uh, resin. Yeah, you can do that. Actually, you can do that. I mean, it depends how how people like to. Uh, I usually don't like using resin with with uh, with uh, glue because I feel it's like overworking it. And sometimes, honestly, if I use uh, wood glue, I prefer having only like two or three layers, so it's quite elastic. You know, it's not that. That you're most what you like. Yeah, but you can do that, of course, you can do that. Yeah, and also, it seems so heavy, it's so it's, Don't use it at home because, I mean, just learn from my mistakes. My mom wasn't happy when I was testing all this stuff. And yeah, so the key is actually what the smooth surface of your armor is. The key is brushes. So uh, basically, if you apply wood glue, if you apply any other kind of uh, of um, primer, uh, you have to think about if you use uh, this kind of a cheaper brushes, they will leave those marks. And if you see those marks on your armor, it doesn't look very realistic, right? It will look like you know cheap armor prop or something, you know, you know theater prop. And you really want to go for this natural realistic look. So, if you want to uh, get the smoothest surface possible, I really recommend using nylon brushes. The, the one without uh, natural, uh, natural um, hair, just the plastic hair. Uh, preferably the one with the rounded edges. They leave the less, the less marks. Or, if you are super, super um, into that and you don't mind uh, putting a lot of money, you can always get airbrush or you can always get plastic dip in spray can. Plastic dip is this kind of, this kind of rubber in a spray, a spray can. Do you guys have it here? Yeah. In Greece? Okay, so you guys know this one. But it's kind of expensive, right? And so. we use it for LARP weapons also. For what? And we use it for LARP weapons also. Oh, that's better. Okay, so latex or plastic dip. And they sell it on a uh, motorcycle. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it. for the... Um, for the, rub the tires. For rubber the tires, right? Right, right. right. Okay. So if you want to get the cheapest one, you can always go to the motor and auto auto car um, shop stores, and you can get it for the for the wheels. So it's one of the best things because spray paint leaves the less marks possible. You just be careful with the uh, amount of, of the, the paint you apply because if you put too much, it's going to drip. I mean, any kind of stuff, paint, wood glue, uh, plastic, everything. Just go with the small and thin, uh, thin layers because the thinnest layer is going to uh, dry faster. It's not going to leave any marks. So it's a matter of technique. So just be, be, just be patient. Don't do you know big big things because the time is running out. I mean, if you're working uh, daily for convention, you have to just like out cover your armor in, in in paint. It's going to be a rush job, and you can leave some marks. So. Be careful with that. <laughs> yeah. Can we use uh, sponge? Of course, you can use sponge. Sponge is kind of, I think, it's the best um, way of uh, applying latex, for example, with sponge. Probably, I mean, probably. And mm -hmm. what type of sponges? There are sometimes kind of uh, uh, brushes with sponges on it. Did you, did you see it sometimes in the, in the art shop, the shops? No, I mean, some people are shaking heads for yes. So, did you see it in the art shop here in Greece? I'm not sure I have personally. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's this kind of, it, it just looks like a normal brush, but instead of the fibers, you have a very thin foam. Uh -huh. Maybe you, you get that uh, in uh -huh. the art stores. They're very, very cheap. Okay. So this one works the best for me because it leaves some marks, but later it's kind of like pushy, so like, um, it blends together. Yeah, seriously, if you guys have questions, like, like, like the lady here, please, please ask me. <laughs> okay, so the paint job. The paint job will be very, very interesting, guys. Actually, it's one of the most important parts of making costumes, because you can make perfect costume 
from the phone, from WordLab, from Chrome, from anything. But if you mess up with the with the paint job, so even if you make your arrow from cardboard, paint job can make it look like holy shit, like super material. So the best uh, basic uh, paints uh, always use it. All my all, all my arrows are acrylics. They are very very cheap, very easy to find. Usually you can find so many different colors and shades. You don't really have to even mix it up to get the perfect shade. Usually you can just go to the store and get the nice nice shade of the color you want. So I really recommend acrylics. Uh, of course, there are pieces here in Greece. Are they expensive? Yeah, so that's very good to hear. So you can always use that. Uh, I also find some acrylics in the spray paint. So if you don't want to you know, mess up with the brush or you don't feel confident using the brush, you can always spray paint a little bit more and get acrylic paint in the spray can. So, so that's a very good way to paint the armor. And also, my little secret actually is using um, spray paint for cars actually. The whole armor here is, is painted with the spray paint, car spray paint in some metallic color I found for the for the for the for the cars. And they make really nice metallics uh, for any kind of armor. So if you want to get this uh, old old metal look, I recommend those there. It's quite cheap. It's usually 20 zloty in Poland, so 5 euro for the pounds so of the match. The same price. The same price. Just the here. Yeah. Are these uh, depends. In uh, about um, spray paints, you usually have two types of, of, uh, of spray paints. Uh, the acrylic water base that I taught you before and uh, the one based on um, resins. So basically most of the car spray paints that are, uh, are based on resins, you can all, resin, you can all, but you can also find the water ones. And important note here, if you want to cover your armor with two different types of spray paints, and you find your, um, for example, you have black, which is acrylic, and you have um, silver, which is um, resin based. If you cover that together, it can actually crack up and break your armor. It will make this small, um, small, small rivers, how do you call it? Small cracks. Cracks, yeah. And you, it, because the two types of the spray doesn't like each other well, <laughs> they fight, they go to chemical connection reaction, and it breaks. On the, on the surface. So remember to always use one hand because you don't want to you know, uh, risk getting the armor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Hmm. I, have, I think like this program doesn't show a few of, the, of my slides because I think I'm missing something. So I will add them before this decides using those things. So, a uh, very important part about making armors is actually um, technique, how to apply the, uh, how to apply paint. And if you are going for a very clean, nice, you know, I'm a kawaii, for example, armors, that's okay, you can always just take your, your spray paint, just paint the, the surface, it will be clean, it will be nice, that's okay. But if you're going for more realistic and, you know, interesting, um, interesting armor, for example, you know, the, all the, uh, very dark fantasy stuff, or maybe games, or anything. It's better to use realistic uh, and um, you know, just go for the rea rea real, real um, style. Let me check if I can find those pictures because I would really love to show you. And I catch a feeling that it's not showing well. I'm not sure why. Why I'm not showing? Why I'm not showing? Sometimes when I go to collections and I try to show this, this funnel, they're using very, 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 very weird um, program that doesn't show all the pictures. And I have a feeling that this program is not working with my pictures. Hello, pictures. Where are your pictures? Is it working? Yes! Hello! That is perfect. Okay, so you're back on track, sorry for the, for the way. Uh, so, if you guys want to go for the re re very real and very cool armors, uh, I would like to show you the technique, um, maybe that later, the technique called dry brushing technique. So, it's usually used for uh, making um, figurines, for painting figurines, for painting, uh, you know, the small, the small miniatures. And if you guys are, for, for example, painting Warhammer figures, I bet you guys know that. I, okay, so the, you know that. How, how to for 36 years. 
Okay, so here is a good one. So this technique is very useful for, for making your armor looking 3D. Basically, what you, what you need to do is to take some kind of a darker shade of your armor. So if you're using uh, silver, you can pick dark silver, you can pick uh, brown, you can pick black, anything that is darker than the base. And then you have to um, use the dry brush, so no water applied here. You take a very small amount, very, very small amount, and you have to dip it and put it into every corner of your armor. So for example, yeah. for example, in this, in this piece, you can see all the small edges that are you know, lower than the, the other parts have this black color inside. And this color is actually making a huge difference. You, you, you can just see uh, this part without, without paint, you will see how much it changes. Uh, the black color is kind of taking out and taking, uh, taking everything visually up, which is not the color black. So you can see it's more 3D, it's more natural. Uh, also, every, every scratch, every like small thing is painted with, with the black color. It's like putting everything, um, all small things, uh, more to make it more visible. I think I can show it, it, it to you so you can see it better. Please don't mind that it's a little bit broken because I was wearing it like for five convention already. So just be, just don't join me, don't join me. You can see it here, and yeah. Besides that, there's also rust, I will show you in a second. Uh, you always also see the, uh, the gloves I made for this costume. Oh. Actually, this is a foam, this is a uh, foam is here, and the gloves are warped, like, which we will talk about in a second. Yeah, so maybe you can see how the, the difference that the paint job does. And I always recommend using this kind of technique for armors that are supposed to be as real as possible. Oh, here you can see one of my corsets and how you apply the, 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 the paint. So basically all the dark corners, all the corners that have something under um, upper upper them, so everything that is lower than the other details, everything that needs some, some rest. For example, you, just, you can just like imagine your, your character going through you know, the battle, going through the, the forest, the mud. Where would the, the dirt, the mud stay, right? In all the small edges, especially the rust, rust likes to stay in the edges and all the deeper parts. So you just have to use your imagination and you can really pull that off. And trust me, when you are judging cosplay competition, judges usually uh, very appreciate when cosplay give you know, the costumes like extra, extra life, extra um, realistic value. And also one of the things I really, really like in costumes, uh, especially you can see here, it's one of my friends uh, from Poland as well, and he made armor from Berserk. And have you have you seen Berserk before? No. Okay, so a few of them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so a few of you know, know Berserk. So you know how bloody this Amula is, how bloody this Maga is. It's all about your killing monsters and the blood is everywhere. So basically, uh, Zell decided to add his um, a little bit of blood on his armor, and it looks amazing in, in the reality. Uh, this armor actually is uh, just acrylic paint mixed with some brown and other shade, uh, shades of the okay, other shades of the, uh, of the of the paint, but you can also use fake blood. Actually, fake blood, fake, fake blood looks even real, realish <laughs> on the armor. So I really recommend using that. You can always just put some uh, some uh, powder or anything that will uh, make it more um, less li liquid, liquidy, more or more uh, like gel. Yeah, so I really like those those kind of uh, techniques. Uh, also, in the part I have shown you, you can also see rust. And this is actually one of the things that I really like uh, in the felt armors and most you know, broken, destroyed armors. Uh, so, to achieve rust effect, or if you want to achieve, for example, the, um, the mud or something dirty, you can always use pigments. So, the powders with colors. Uh, for me, usually I just take some wood glue, I dip it with a small uh, sponge on the armor, and then put a little bit of the pigment, depends what color you want. And you just dip it. Uh, wood glue, usually after it dries, it gets um, transparent, so only the pigment stays. And that's how you get your armor in your 3D, dirty, dirty part. <sighs> it's hot here, guys. It's really hot. So how do you like it so far? <laughs> Do you have any questions about painting? Yes? Is it his own blood? Oh. Uh, <laughs> let's say it's the blood of his enemies. Yes? I would like to help my son. I'm not sure exactly for me. I'm 
What do we do? Yeah, what do we do? Can we uh, save the piece or do we of course. start over? Again? Of course. I mean, it's very hard to actually break foam because foam is super flexible. If you break the warp blood, then you can think about that. But if you if you, if you break foam, it's it's not that hard actually. Uh, this uh, actually this costume got broken. This part got broken and was uh, putting it on <laughs> today today morning. Mm -hmm. So I just used a little bit of uh, super glue, the one I have shown you in the, in the start of the of the presentation. And I don't think you can see the the break the breakage. <laughs> so foam is actually very good with the with the, all the damage. The thing is to always have some glue with yourself at the convention. Always just have a small uh, small bag with your essentials. You know you need you need some help usually for the on the cosplay slaves. <laughs> Mine is there. Thank you, Oleg, for helping me today. <laughs> we don't have glue today with us. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't need it today. Actually, you need it. Shit. You need to go to the CR kids, you know. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, so the glue would be always appreciated if you were at the convention and had it. But anyway, a question. Do you guys have that uh, cosplay 8 spots in, in the, your comic cons or your conventions? Like a yeah, small table with the glues and everything. You don't have it? Yeah. Maybe someone can do it. it. Yeah, you should have it. It's very useful. Like I, every convention I see so many people being like, you know, um, coming there. Well, I saw a sign saying that the cosplay burns. Really? Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, by your table. By your table. Um, the cosplay is the Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. I, I never saw anyone coming to them asking for help, so maybe you will ask. We all cosplay the costumes. Okay, so <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, everyone hit each other or something like that. Sorry, So maybe uh, actually someone hits each other. Oh, so you have this coffee drum and someone you know, yeah. pushes you from the stairs. And they really can't do it. <laughs> oh, funny story. Uh, do, you know guys for, do you guys know Fortran? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> some years ago, we have a very trolly friend. She's the national troll, troll of the Polish cosplay community. Uh, she went on Fortran and she wrote it in Poland. People are uh, pushing other cosplayers from the stairs to just win the competition. <laughs> of course, it's, it's a bullshit. We have very nice. <laughs> so a few years later, years later, I went to your cosplay, and uh, there was a girl from Spain, and she came to me and said, "Oh my God, Shapi, I heard you guys are pushing each other from the stairs. Is it true?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. So never believe what they say on the internet. And yeah, I really hope that your 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 community is also very friendly. Is it? <laughs> I hope so. Well, you give us ideas now, you know. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, my lips are Let's go back to questions. Okay, so patterns. And actually, it's a very important part of making armors. Uh, patterns can, you know, as, as, as much as the clothes. You can make or break your question because well fitting armor will always look better than, you know, massive and impressive but very loosely. You know, loosely looking armor. So let me try to explain to you a few techniques how to get it just right. So one of the most easy and friendly techniques, which you just see at first, but believe me, very nice, uh, is covering yourself and your body and anything you know you need to put armor later on with foil and then with paper, with, uh, with sorry, not paper but uh, with um, tape, paper, 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 paper tape, or normal tape. And uh, in this case, if you just cover your body with the, with the foil and then with the tape and then draw the exact armor piece you need and then you cut it from the foil and put it on your paper, you'll get the perfect one-to-one -one, uh, you know, pattern of your armor because this is your arm, you know, so it's going to be just as, as perfect as the one that was, was just on your, on your body. It's very easy and always recommended even for the for sewing. If you're just going to train to make your costume and you don't know how to exactly make your pattern, it's very easy to just put the foil on yourself, on your friend, on the mannequin, and then take the, the pattern from it. Uh, also, uh, don't always go for the one seam piece. It's not, it's, um, how to say it? Uh, it's better to have a few lines, you know, cutting lines, connecting lines on your armor, than just going for no lines, and then your armor will just be very, very loose. Because the same as, uh, as in your clothes, if you just see and look uh, how your clothes are made, usually they always have some lines, right? The lines are there for fitting. So if you do the same with foam, it's going to fit you much, much better. 
and a good idea and a good example are courses. You know how the lines are going, guys, right? And this is like the best idea to do. Lines are connecting together well, you're going to get the best curves. And the curves are how our body is built. It's built. We're not young, we're not, we're not robots, we're not lines. You have all the curves, all the, all the right pieces on our, on our body. So just try to think with, you know, sewing, seamstress way. Maybe it will be easier for you to understand this way. And also, I want to show you how to connect pieces together and how to connect uh, armor on yourself. Uh, this is one of my two biggest questions I have ever made. Yeah, believe me, inside this, this beard that puts me somewhere, that, uh, I don't know where I'm, I'm finishing somewhere in the next piece. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, I, I want to show you those pieces because each part of this armor is holding on me with Velcro. Everything is holding with, 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 with Velcro. The piece you can buy in every uh, you know, a shop with um, needles and thread, you know, the... the oh, I need to go down. Sewing shops, sewing shops. Also army shops. Oh, also army, yeah. The army shops have the very strong ones, right? The, the strongest you can find. So also if you have, if you have heavy parts of armor, they will, they will do. Uh, basically, most of my armors are not that heavy because I really uh, love being comfortable and as lightweight as possible. So I always use only this kind of uh, um, of the size of the velcro. So it's not that big. It's usually used for uh, curtains, you know, the heavy fabrics, and it also really holds. I was walking to the conventions uh, to, to the convention today, cold day, and it was, uh, it was like bumping my my armor. It never fell down. So it's really hot well, and I always recommend using Velcro for the most of the armor pieces. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe I will also show you a few examples of myself today because I have a few different ways. So, for example, um, what would be most interesting? So I have Velcro here, of course. Uh, I have Velcro behind my backpack <laughs> as well. So right here, I don't know if you can see it. It's here. Uh, my backpack is holding actually on those snaps you can use for your, for your backpacks. Have you ever seen those? You know, when you have backpack, you have some snaps, you can yeah. connect. You can adjust it. Exactly, exactly. So my backpack is connected to the everything with the snaps. So it holds well, it's nothing, nothing is falling. Also, the one I really, really like in using in, in costumes are zippers. Zippers are the ones that, you know, you can usually you, you sew them into your dresser or something, right? You can also sew them into armor. So for example, my shoes, my, my neck pieces are holding with zippers. They are here, hidden under this panel. <laughs> so I can just have a zipper, I can take it off, take it off, and just zip it down. So this is the, the few tricks I can show you. I will show you pictures, so don't worry, you will see it better. So the velcro, as I, as, as I mentioned, very strong, very durable, you can hold most of the materials. Uh, just one thing, I don't recommend using velcro uh, in the pieces like neck or around your shoulders, especially if you, have, if you have long hair or long wig, because the velcro will just, you know, take your hair and it will hurt, believe me, and it will ruin your wig and, you know, your work of, of styling the wig. So, uh, it would be better to just use maybe the snaps from the, from the, from the back that I just told you about, or something like this, because it will just save your wig and your hair and... Oh. Also, you can use the velcro inside some armor, so it's not that visible. You can, you know, you, the, the better you hide your velcro, the, the, the better for the costume because no one will see your connections. And then you can always hide it under another piece, another layer of foam. So you just have to be very, very smart about that. Here are the piece I, I told you about with the zipper. As you can see, here is the zipper. And usually, when you hold your armor, you hold your body. Some pieces of costume are not that visible, right? So for example, the legs, the, if you stand on the convention, usually people don't see the back, or they don't see the sides of your, of your armor. So you can do the same thing with the, with, the, with, the, with the zippers. You can install them in the back or on the sides of your, of your armor. And in this case, it's less visible. Um, what else? Also, if you don't want to uh, connect your, 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 your uh, zippers with the base of your armor, you can always sew the zipper to the other piece of foam. In this case, you can see this very small green, uh, green line that they see it on the, on the picture. Yeah. It's very thin, 2 millimeters foam, which I sewed the velcro to, mm -hmm. and then glued to the 
base armor. In this case, you don't see any kind of seam. So it's still armor, right? There's no seams, no sewing. So yeah. So I recommend using that one for the for the for the zippers. What else? What else? What else? What else? Hinges. This thing you can you can actually see on my arm piece, which is somewhere with you. I hope it's safe. <laughs> Oh, okay, oh, it has this. Awesome. The people? Yeah, the people. So actually, hinges are those small pins that can open or close parts of your armors. And especially with this piece, um, as you can see, it's quite big, you know? It was my arm piece, it was covering most of my hand. If I just glue it uh, flat to my armor, I wouldn't be able to use my wrist easily. So I just uh, sew one of the hinges to the, to the armor. In this case, I was able to move my hand freely. And trust me, it's, you know, it looks very silly and, and, and small, but after a whole day of convention, I was really like, happy to have this hinge. Because I, actually, I, I, I could actually move my, my wrist, do something, you know, hold people's head. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So yeah, that was very useful and it's a very small thing, but you know, if, when you construct a big armor, it's just please think a little bit about yourself and your, your health, your safety, your comfort your comfort in the costume. Because, you know, it's very nice to look pretty on the pictures, but you won't survive longer than three, four hours in this one. Especially if you're in Greece. I'm really very sorry for the temperatures, but, whew, that's funny. <laughs> okay. So, another idea about, uh, about uh, closing something, uh, hiding something. So, uh, probably most of you have seen those crazy uh, Korean or Chinese games where there's no gravity, no seams, no, no McDonald's, anything. It just holds to you, like magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, cosplayers have to be you know, more, uh, to, more smart than the, the designers and just quite smart and outthink them. So, that's one of the ideas that I really like for the pieces of armor that have no visible seams. You can just hide the the velcro inside and close with another part of the armor. So, just maybe an idea, maybe you will help someone with your projects. I can give you another idea. Of course, I'm please. obsessed with Chinese and Asian. <laughs> <Really good. laughs> uh, personally, mm -hmm. I use the silicone, you know, that they use for... Uh, straps? Yes. The clear straps? Yes, oh, I use it everywhere. That's good, yeah. Even uh, with uh, the one that I was wearing today, mm -hmm. I had some uh, parts mm -hmm. that uh, were... Uh, it, it wasn't vi visually... Uh, you couldn't see it at all. Mm -hmm. Like there was nothing that, that they, they were attached with nothing. There is this uh, silicone, you know, That's for, awesome. for uh, brass. For brass, for brass, yes. Yeah. Actually, no, I used the same uh, for, the, uh, for my... Um, hmm, how to say it? The cold. Breastplate? No, yeah, breastplate, but I mean, like, when I'm showing, because there was uh, yes. skin break. Skin. Skin. And I was sure that if I start to move the convention, it's gonna. <laughs> and everyone will be happy, but not me. So, <laughs> so I used the, the, the silicone strap as, as you did. So, really, uh, you, you can recommend both the, uh, the silicone straps for the. Uh, clear, um, you know, the, the, the things that are not supposed to be connected, so you can use the clear stuff, they are not visible as much. And also, if you put some powder on them, like, you know, fixing powder, uh, makeup powder, they're going to be not, not, not as flashy and they're not going to uh, reflect the light on the pictures. So, yeah. Actually, I will need some powder right now. So, excuse me for that. And yeah, so about corset closing, especially for girls. Uh, so corset closing is one of the best uh, type of closing of, of your armor uh, when it comes to, to your body. And also, you know, sometimes we, we, we make costumes, they want to stay with us forever, for maybe for a few years. And our body will be changing. We can lose weight, we can gain weight. And with this kind of uh, closing, you can always fit your armor. So if you are planning to, for example, go for a very good uh, uh, jog and you, know, you lose like 16, 16 kilometers or something, you can always do this one and you will always stay with you. And it's also very nice for breastplates and I think that they have to stay very close to your body because you can always just tie it very, very strong, it always, always stays. So breastplates are one of the best pieces of armor that you can use uh, corset clothing. And this is one of my personal tricks. I really like this one and I really love to share it with people. 
So, uh, pieces on your arms or legs that can fall down. If you have this part of armor, for example, on your on your tights, on your um, on your upper upper arms, they usually can fall down because there's nothing that can you know hold them on your body. If you don't bend your knee, they're going to fall down. So what is the, one of the easiest things to make to make them stay? If you don't have any kind of uh, undersuit under, under the armor, I uh, happen to have one, so I just sew some velcro to my hmm, so sew some velcro to my uh, black 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 suit, so it stays on velcro. Stays on velcro. But if you don't have any kind of bodysuit, you don't have any kind of you know uh, sock, uh, socks or anything. You can always just sew this kind of a band from rubber, you know, the, the one you put in your pants or anyone, uh, anywhere. And then you can sew or glue the velcro to it. So when you put it on your on your uh, leg, it's going to stay on your leg in one place. It's going to kind of cut your circul circulation or your blood, so <laughs> it's, not good, it's not perfect, but <laughs> it can make your armor stay on your legs. And I don't think the, there is a worse feeling than going to the convention, feeling fancy, feeling awesome, and you're part of the party. Yeah, that can actually break your day. Yeah. So, if you want to avoid that, please try to use this kind of trick. It might seriously save your question and your armor. And shoes. This is also one of the most important uh, topics about uh, connecting armors to your body. Because, as you can guys know, uh, shoes and feet have the most bones. So when you move, all the bones are moving with you. And uh, of course, when you are moving around convention, that's what you came for, the convention to walk around. You are moving your, your, your feet, your legs the most. So, what if I can recommend you, never ever try to glue your armor to your shoes. Because you will ruin the shoes, you can easily break the glue, break the foam, and then there's no going back, you can't really fix that because it's already broken and the convention is there and it's not really, it's not really cool. And so I always recommend using um, uh, corset clothing on your shoes. So if you can hide some, some strips, some strings, I'll just add that one on the corset, do you remember? Like, like on the like, like on shoes, like lace in the shoes. You can always just hide some of the, uh, some of the laces under the, under the shoe. It also, um, it also depends on the weight of the armor. Uh, thankfully, in my armor today, I didn't have to, didn't have to uh, use some strips because my shoes were quite tough, so I, didn't, I wasn't afraid that it would break. Also, my shoes weren't fully covered in armor, only the tip, so it didn't, didn't really break. It's really, really okay, it doesn't really look uh, that bad, it doesn't break. But if, if, if you have to cover whole shoes in armor, I would recommend you using the, the strips because it's safer and also you can wear your favorite pair of shoes for the convention and then have it um, untouched after the con, which is quite okay if you're on the budget question and you don't want to buy any, any shoes. But I usually buy shoes in uh, second hand shops for questions so because it's cheaper, because it's easier and I don't feel that destroying the for questions. Okay, so let's go with tools. It's also very important topic because uh, the way we use our tools can also very uh, make our our work easier. Yeah. So one of the most important hot glue. I mean, hot glue gun. It's always yeah. Just one small question. Very short about the car spray color. Did you ever use it on the shoes if you want to match the armor and the shoes and the part of the clothes? Great question. Is it? Alright, so uh, usually I don't recommend using any kind of spray paint on your shoes because as well it's going to move with your feet, it's going to crack. So I don't recommend that. But there is a way that I found recently about uh, using plastic. Do you remember I, I told you about primers? Yeah. With latex, wood glue, there's also, there's also plastic. This, this kind of a rubber in a spray paint. So if you, you can find it in the uh, car shops uh, with you know with the you use it for wheels and everything. So if you can cover your shoe any kind of fake leather, normal leather with the plastic dip, it's easier than to paint it because it sticks. The the the, uh, the rubber sticks to shoe and the paint sticks to rubber. <laughs> so if you want to cover it with, with some kind of spray paint, plastic dip is a very good primer for that. 
Also, there is uh, this kind of a paint for leather, you know, different colors. So if you can spare a little bit more money, you can go for the uh, specific paint for leather, and it will stay to the leather just perfectly. For example, my shoes were painted with, with uh, rubber and then uh, then a spray paint. So you can see it kind of holds. I mean, it, it's after a few conventions, it, it kind of looks broken. You know, it, it's it's kind of going off, but it's not that bad after you know, so much so much time. So, so how to learn? Always useful, always good. If you don't want to, you know, stick your uh, glue stick with the lighter and wait hours for it to, to get uh, hot and melted, just use this. It's very cheap, it's very good. You can find everyone, and I believe every cosplayer has hot glue. <laughs> yeah. And sewing machine. And believe me, sewing machine can be also very useful when you make errors. You remember sewing the, the zipper to the phone? Sewing machines. And honestly, uh, the older, the better. I noticed that the newest, the, the latest sewing machines uh, are kind of worse. They are making from cheap plastic, you know, China plastic. So if you have those kind of uh, older machines, maybe from a brother, grandmother or mother, stay with that. <laughs> it's going to be very, very useful, especially for sewing leather. I love you. <laughs> Still, uh, my grandmother's, you know, uh, 100 years old. Uh, I have it some. Uh, That's very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find it. Find it. It's a treasure. You have to find it. Oh, I know what it is. It's, Actually, it's, it's not lost, it's just. Actually, the, the, the exact same sewing uh, machine I have. <laughs> Just a little bit older. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So, yeah, yeah. Mine is a whole table. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a it's vintage. With a giant <laughs> medal and oh, yeah, have many that kind of thing. Okay, maybe not a whole thing. A giant medal petal. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. press it so it's like my step on it. I mean you are the true was there, I see, but maybe not that old. You can say it. No, I just I just have a relic from another age. You know, I, see, I see, I see. Okay. Let's go to the other two that I really truly love and cherish every time I use it. Uh, True tool, rotary tool, any kind of multi multi tool that uh, you can send down your armor. It has so many different ways that you can use it. As you can see in the picture, it has a lot of different ends. So this kind of a um, rotary tool, it's very handy. You can put different different ends. If you want to send 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 something down, you can use, for example, those those things. If you want to cut some uh, hard pipes or any kind of hard plastic, you can use the um, the, hmm, the sharp uh, the sharp ends. Uh, you can polish something. You can you know sand down something. It's so many things you can do with rotary tool. It's really nice for for example uh, cutting some pieces for your weapons. You can also use it for making some uh, small details. Maybe some like broken pieces. You can also use the rotary tool for the damage damage stuff. So it's really nice. Always use it for my for my costumes. And yeah. Particularly if you don't want to stay hours cutting something with knife or something like that, you know, just grab a title and do it with the, with the cutting knife. Does it uh, cost much in, in Greece here? No. Well, 20 euros. 20 euros, but you know it's 25 to 30 for I mean, you can pay much more for the Dremel or for other uh, kind of uh, good brands, but if you want to go cheap, I've been using I've been using one uh, with no wire just uh, mm -hmm. yes. it's worth like uh, seven euros or something. Seven euros? Oh, that's cheap. It's a uh, yeah. It doesn't have all of this, you know. Just, okay, just the base. Yeah, okay. But I've been using it for like uh, six years or something. It's that's good. Still, uh, you know, good story. Cherish it. Yeah, lucky with proof, you know. <laughs> Mine's actually surviving about. Two years of cosplay works, then we have to re replace it with a new one. Yeah, but you're overusing it, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. You know. Like, hot blue guns survived with me about three months. <laughs> oh, I'm not really the best for those. Okay, so soldering iron. This one is really used for LEDs and lights and all the kind of cables and connections with electricity. But you can also use it for making wood burning and foam burning. So the same thing you guys saw on the on my armor, on the on the brakes, you can also use hot knife as I told you before, but if you don't have any budget or you just happen to have this tool at home, you can always use it for the for the carving in the foam, in the wood, in anything you want. 
And then, but after that, probably you have to change the, the tip of it because it will probably be damaged after using it on plastic and chemical, chemical stuff. If you walk with that and you have um, not really, um, your, your skin is not used to hot, hot, hot stuff. After eight years of making questions, I don't feel pain anymore. <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> but if you're starting up, please use it because just for safety. And there we go to Borla. So let's let's stop for a second. And do you guys have any more questions about foam? For example, yes. Toxicity. Of foam? Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh... It's foam toxic. Yeah. <laughs> foam is uh, the material. Uh, I just told you that foam was using uh, was used in uh, schools, right? Remember at the, at the start. So if, if even the smallest children can use it, we can use it as well. Probably uh, if you eat that. Um, okay. But when you warm foam, uh, it stinks, it smells. When it gets hmm. cold, the best isn't of, that toxic? I think it so depends on the kind of the foam. Because we say Eva foam, but under Eva foam there's so many different types of, of foam. It all depends which one to use. Um, hmm. I wouldn't recommend you know, smelling it, but I don't think it's you know, that, that harmful for, for you. What about, for example, is harmless? Warm is harmless uh, with, with all the with the, with the smell. For, uh, actually, warm that smells like cookies <laughs> for me at least. If you are getting it hot, so that's okay. But just don't eat it, I guess. <laughs> the, the toxic things will be actually um, glues. Glues are the ones that can actually really really smell. So just be careful with that. Um, with, glue, with, glue, with, with wood glue, don't worry. Uh, once I was so tired, I. Uh, I had a cup with water and a cup with um, with glue. I was working about you know two two a.m. three a.m. at night, and I was was I was supposed to drink water. I drank glue. No. <laughs> no, when I just noticed that I was like, oh my god, and I just uh, washed my face uh, and my and my mouth. It, it wasn't that, but yeah, I mean glue. Wood glue is not, not toxic. I, I'm here, I surprise. <laughs> wood glue was used to be made from cheese. In the ancient times. Seriously? Yes. I so so that. it's a tradition. The wood glue is made from bioorganic products. Oh shit. And it's uh, <laughs> cheese and vinegar, I think, and some chemical stuff. Awesome. I didn't know that. Thank you. Yes. No, I know that, but, but I, why why I like it's that. Not toxic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you guys are hungry with players, you have no money for food. You can eat your apple. You can eat your apple. I mean, uh, I don't see it in the camera. I'm saying it's not going to be so <laughs> okay, so I think that's uh, so about the phone guys. Do you have any more questions? Do you think you can? Hmm? Uh, how do you make the juice? The wood for sorry? The juice. 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 The Oh, actually, this is resin. This is resin. Polyester well, resin that I cast uh, with some dye, the you know, color dyes, and then you know I cast them in the, in the molds. It's actually such a long topic. I should have another another part about that. But uh, polyester resin is the same thing I have shown you for uh, prying the armor. Do you remember some time ago that you have to that, that you have this liquid and small hardener. You have to mix it up together to make very strong material. So that's it. Resin, polyester resin. That's it. And it's also very, very toxic, so I don't recommend that using that. Uh, actually, I don't know about Greece, but in Poland we uh, recently got a new uh, type of warba. It's called crystal art. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So maybe only guys should see that, because crystal art is this kind of a plastic palace that you have to put in some <coughs> hot water, and after it, you, it, makes, it, it gets hot, you can, uh, for example, uh, put some dye, you know, color dyes into it, and then you can push it into molds. So it's easier than it's easier than, uh, than resin, and it also looks kind of like gemstones. So maybe if you don't want to work with sticky stuff, you can try it. Or not. Yeah. There is also the translucent polymer clay you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but honestly, I believe it's good for small things because if you use yeah. it for a big because yeah. so it's not mm. a gem, okay. yeah, but for small gems, uh, you know, it's a little Yeah, for the small ones, it's very nice. Also, uh, you can use the small stones from the, from the glass. Do you guys have those for decorations? No. Mm. So, for example, if you, if you 
go to the floral shops. Glass, uh, glass stones. Mm -hmm. There's one you put in the, in the in flowers or maybe on your oh, oh, okay. tokens of all card mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, they're not that big, they're very tiny, but you need some small stones in your armor. You can always paint them with the nail polish. Uh, we can always mm -hmm. use the tokens, uh, you know, in various geek games, mm -hmm. like uh, board games or card games, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, every uh, home store would have, you know, two scholars and stuff. Yeah, of course. Uh, lots of yeah, shiny I mean, glass things. There's so much ways you can approach something. There's not, you know, there's never a right way to make costume. Come on, it's never a right way. You can make your costume out of super expensive wool, you know, cosmic plastic and everything, and it can look like shit, honestly. But if you, you can always make it from the very cheap material, you know, even trash. Like this costume is half made from trash. Trust me. I just found some, for example, some old bottles or everything. I just connected it somehow, somehow, somehow together and it works. So honestly, you can just buy, you can find very cheap materials and still achieve a good effect. So please don't, you know, uh, listen to me and think, oh my god, this is the only way. No, no, no. Just go around the Facebook. I'm just trying to show you the those like, you know, easy things for me, but it can also be different, different for you. Okay, we have 15 minutes, so it's enough for Roma. Let's go and finish up. So, what is word that I want to find it? So, you guys have shop. Uh, one shop, actually. One shop, But it over. has black word line, brown word line for sure. I don't know about crystal, but it does have mm -hmm. those two kinds. I see, okay. Well, honestly, it fits enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's not for you. It's, you don't really need that, that many different kind of word line. Uh, and also, there's only one shop because uh, the sellers of word line only allow one shop to sell it per country. That's why uh, you have no, uh, no like competition between shops. There's only one shop. The only one person can sell it per country. Just like this is not even Okay, so Worda. Worda is a thermoplastic material that you can use with heat, and you can heat it up to the certain certain um, amount of degrees, and then it's going to be very very easy to bend. It's going to act a little bit like like, like, like a thick fabric. You can put it into different shapes, different, different you know, curves. It's very easy to use. But also, if you uh, put too much degrees, it's going to be too soft to use. So sometimes, if you don't really know how to, you know, uh, manage the material, I suggest you know be very careful with the degrees of the water. And this material is not toxic. It's going to smell very nice. As I told you, you like cookies. Uh, and also one of the best uh, properties of Worda is that it doesn't need any glue to connect to each other. If you just put two pieces of Worda, which is hot, as you remember, it has to be hot, then you can connect it together and it will stay like, like without any glue. So if you want to save some money on glue, go for it. Uh, you have different types of Worda, you, can, you have uh, Worda. Uh, the, the basic one, you have the brown one, you have the black art, which is just black and also it, it's much much smoother because Wanda has this kind of you know, rigid texture. It's, it's not super smooth, it's kind of kind of textury. Uh, black one, the black version of this one is much much smoother, so you can use this one if you don't like the the, the, um, the surface. You can also use the transparent Wanda, which is very good for all the visors or the, the transparent parts of it. And but not much much more. You can see how I use the black Wanda. Covering, for example, one of the styrofoam props I made, and you can see how smooth, smooth it is. Actually, those little pieces are here. <laughs> here is not okay, here. here. So you can see it was made from wood lab because I was scared because this part shoulder are moving are moving so much because I was and I was scared it would break during during the wearing the question. So I made it out of wood. Yeah. So this material is uh, is quite smoother. I would say it's better. But it has a it has a crown it has a cone. If you want to connect two pieces of black wool together, the glue will be uh, less stronger. So it's easier it's better to connect two pieces of brown wool than two pieces of black wool. So just a reminder, it will be uh, the glue will, won't stick as as much. Okay. Uh, the basic technique how to use wool is to use it inside and use it with a very thin. Craft foam, either foam, or you can always use some paper or cardboard if you want to make it uh, make it cheaper. And simply you put uh, some piece of, of armor, you know, the, the, the pattern, the shape you want, inside two pieces of wool heat it up together so it's hot from both sides, then close it just like sandwich, that's why it's called sandwich technique. 
you can close it with, with your fingers, and then you can shape it in any shape, shape you want. And it will uh, keep the shape after it cools very, very well. The only thing is to, to be afraid about bubbles, which I will show you in a second when I talk about um, the problems of bubbles. As you can see, he, you can see how the water uh, is very good with covering uh, foam. If you make your, for example, this helmet is made from very thin uh, craft foam, you know, the two, two millimeters. So it's going to be very, very wobbly with, you know, crack and stuff. So this person in the picture just took the water and covered the helmet with water and pushed the water into all this, uh, the, the details. In this case, you can see how it kind of like, um, <coughs> Fits with the with the details. It, it doesn't like uh, cover anything. Warbler is uh, going to stay with the with the foam. It's going to show all the details. So it's very good if you want to uh, just cover foam with a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of small things, and still be able to show it, show that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And also one of the most um, useful. Uh, uses of Warbler is to cover uh, styrofoam or styro, uh, styrodur. Do you guys have uh, styrodur here in, in Greece? Yeah, that's great. Right. It's called styro styrodur uh, or XPS in Polish, I'm not sure how about, about Greece. Uh, this material is great because it's very lightweight, it's very easy to carve in. So if you want to make, for example, a huge weapon, you can always just use some styro styro styrodur and just carve it. Uh, cabinet, uh, but also it has this kind of disadvantage that it's very easy to break. So if you don't, if you want to avoid your, you know, marvelous masterpiece armor or, or you know, uh, your weapon to break, I really suggest covering it with wood board. Now, one layer of board will save it, and it will be basically undestructible for your for your armor. Okay. And one of the, my favorite actually, because I'm Polish people and I just don't want to uh, you know, lose any, anything from the material that I use, is to, uh, is that uh, Warda can, of course, as I told you before, connect to the air without any glue. So this makes a possibility to use as a clay. If you want to make some small details, small, some small ornaments on your armor, you can always just put some heat on, connect all the small parts, you know, all the scraps that you have left from your, from your work, Connect them together with some heat, and then you can use them just as you know, modeling clay or anything like that. So if you want to save some money and make some uh, very nice details with the with the scraps, here you are. So one that is expensive, but it has so much nice things about it, and you basically don't lose any any money. With foam, you always have those small scraps you have to just throw away. With all that, everything stays with you. So every every money, every every cent, every, everything is. You are not losing anything. Here are some examples of the work I made. It's actually my sword of Bellona from Spike. And you can see I just used the scraps that I had in my home. I had like a, you know, two big bags of scraps. I one day just took them, put it up, and just used them for the for the other small ornaments you can see. The black and, and brown work. Oh, and uh, um, actually the blue things are just gemstones. They just didn't need it and just put one and take it there. And also, if you want to achieve uh, the same, uh, I mean, if you have some scraps and you don't want to make any 3D elements, you just want to have another piece of warba ready to use, just use it all. <laughs> I mean, don't tell your mom because she won't be happy, but. She won't know. She won't know if you, if you clean up. Always clean your boots and she won't know. Okay. So here's an example how you can use your scraps of Warda into armor. So some, some spikes, some small things, some 3D effects, everything is cool. And uh, the good thing about Warda is that it's very, very durable. So even if you hit someone with the small spikes, uh, the spikes won't break. I mean, the other person, not sure, but the spikes won't break. <laughs> the costume is perfect. Well, so evil, please don't listen to me. <laughs> And another thing that I really want to um, tell you, because we are at the comic book convention and probably many people would like to make comic, uh, heroes, you know, comic book heroes, and many of them have masks. So, remember to never, ever, ever use Wobla on your face. Never use try to model it on your face or, or, on, and, or on any kind of a body uh, part of yours. Please remember to always use some kind of a foil. Uh, aluminum foil is okay because it's going to protect your arm from the heat. 
And yeah, this way you can actually form your masks. Uh, I actually recommend using some styrofoam heads, maybe plastic heads. It's usually the same shape as our face, and this way you don't have to put, you know, hot water on your face and lose your eyebrows and your eyes. And, you know, it's the worth it. <laughs> because it's cool, but hey, hey, you will, you will need those eyebrows. You will need them. And also another thing, if you, for example, forget about your world war and left it in a car, as I told you before, and your costume will just burr, burr, melt away, and you just want to receive your pieces of war once again, you can always use, and I remember, remember to use the transfer paper, you know, the brown paper between it, because you will break your, your iron, and once again, your mom will kill it. Uh, fun fact, when I bought my first the roll of war it was ages ago, I bought it from USA, it was really, really expensive, I got it, I was so happy, and I left in the car. And it melted. <laughs> so that's the same, the, 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 that was the time I found out this, the iron words. <laughs> so I, I was really proud of myself. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> My mom was even more mad because it was, it was a gift from her. So. Okay, I mentioned that you guys can get bubbles on your phone, or on your world, right? So. The thing is that when you when you heat up when you heat your uh, water and foam, uh, as you mentioned before, foam can leave so a little bit of toxic uh, toxic gas. But any gas, I mean, any material that if you heat up is going to leave some 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 some. It's going to breathe a little bit. Uh, so if you close your foam inside of water uh, sandwich, it's going to leave a little bit of bubbles. In case you want to avoid that, just take a small pin of, of sculptures and I think so. This took me ages. <laughs> And yeah, so what that was, was very nice for the uh, for the, all the small details on the sword. You can see here all the foot is made of straps of warm And also, if you have some pieces that are going to be like moving on your body, for example, this costume was made mostly of, of fabrics, so I was just moving around. And if I was if I, if I was to sit down or you know sit down with my skirt. The foam would break, and uh, the foam, uh, the sorry, the the, the paint everything would just be crushed in the in the time I was wearing this costume. So I just covered my piece of of, uh, of foam with some water, and it worked well. It it holds very very nice, and I was able to wear this costume for the convention. Also, uh, these are the ideas for the connect, cover, uh, connecting foam and water. As you can see, those parts are made of foam, which are uh, they are supposed to be light and to wear for my for my customer. But this faces actually I made well for Warda. So this part is Warda, this part is foam. I just took a little bit of um, I took uh, I took a uh, spoon and just pushed the eyes up to get the uh, 3D effect on the faces. And yeah, my my is staying without. She, she, she's called Pagina. Do you have a pet turtle? Hmm, sorry? Do you have a pet turtle? Pet, pet, pet turtle. turtle. Yeah, she, yes, she's here. Yeah. She, she has actually taking pictures and her cage is next to the stone, so she takes it. And another idea is um, when you have a convention, when there's a lot of people, like today on Comic Con, uh, if you make a question and you're afraid of breaking it and Let's be honest, people are going to hug you, you know, they're going to come and touch your costume. Today I was, actually, there was a man who came to me, he was like, looking at my arm, I was very flattered, I was very, it was very nice. But then he came, and he just kind of punched my arm. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. Uh, so, I was a bit, a bit afraid, I mean, my arm was alright, don't worry, it was supposed to be broken. Uh, but if you're afraid for those kind of people that, that really happen in convention, you can always try to use Warda, and exactly in this part, I decided to use Warda for the little blades because I, I knew if I go through the convention, people are going to bump into that and it's going to be broken in a few minutes. So Warda would save the, the, this piece, actually it saved me for Gamescom, it's a very big event in Germany, uh, so it really saved my ass and my costume that day. And it still survived, after I had this costume after a few years, it still survived. I cannot say the same about people who kind of bumped into me, but hey. You're going to do it's what you're okay. going to do. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Cosplayers can have to do what they have to do <laughs> to survive in the strong and, and cruel world of conventions. <laughs> and, okay, yes. So, about, uh, also, 
if you like to uh, if you would like to achieve uh, organic uh, most you know natural weight of texture of your armor if you're instead of making some kind of a dragon or or you know just um, just scales uh, overall for example monster hunter armor would be a very good idea uh, I prefer using Warla for the texture because you can always put some some kind of a texture some kind of a, a trace you know scales everything uh, like that. Mm -hmm. That's it. And how to mess with your Warda is the same as foam, you can use wood, you can use latex, you can use plastic, anything you like. But Warda will be strong anyway, so I would, prefer, I would suggest using just wood glue because it's going to just give you a nice base for paint. And nothing else is needed because it's strong as this. And safety is the last subject, I'm sorry for keeping you here. <laughs> because I'm really, it, it, it's important guys. So, safety. Please always use a mask when you are using, uh, if you are dribbling or sending down warda or sending down foam, because this is how we look like after we dremble the foam. It, it's real, it happens. Everything is covered with the dust. So please use some extra kind of cloth. If you can, uh, it doesn't come out, okay? <laughs> if you can uh, go outside, if you can go on the balcony and do it there. Please do because it will save your, your lungs and also will save uh, cleaning up later. Also, the gloves for heat gun, as I told you before, please be careful. I mean, after a few years of using water, you won't feel your fingers anymore. That happens. But if you still want to have your finger and fingertips, use your gloves <laughs> because it will save your ass. And don't do this. Don't. Please don't do this. Never put uh, any kind of hot air, hot, uh, hot thing on your on your body because you burn yourself. I mean, maybe it sounds funny to you because I mean, after the whole panel we know we don't do this stuff, but some people do that. Please, please take care of them. Just show them the other way. Show them Jesus. Show them to that. I think that the best way to convince them not to do that is to let them do it once. Oh, please don't. I don't want to know. We understand what you're going, but if I say that on follow, they don't go to invite me anymore. So please. And yeah, so overall, guys, costumes is a lot of work, a lot of knowledge, a lot of making mistakes, making no different types of approach to the materials. It's about, you know, just having fun and working hard to find out the best way. Anyways, you don't have to always just follow my, my advice. You can always just look up, ask your friends, ask other cosplayers, and we'll, we'll find on a lot of different ways of making armors. But overall, cosplay juice should be fun. So if you're not feeling good with making your costume, if you're tired, exhausted, not happy with the way it's, it's going, just leave it be, forget about it for one convention, and go back to it later. And I think it's going to be... More, more, much, much more enjoyable than you know, slaving over your your costume overnight and just to lose your sleep and just imagine that you're a zombie. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening. Me. And if you guys have any more questions, I'll be very happy to answer to you tomorrow at my um, at the booth upstairs. You know, upstairs. I'm very happy to see you there. And thank you so much for today, I hope you had fun, and yeah, I love you so.